everyone. My name is Nitsan. Have you ever done a fundamental mistake at work that caused you time and effort to fix? Well, I had, and it was a wrong design of a data model. That happened a few years ago, and since then I've learned one thing or two. And today I'm going to share the learnings with you in this session, designing a data model that will address your business needs. We are going to talk about why do we need to create a good design, but focus more on how to do that. I'm going to present three stages for designing a good data model, and in the end, share some tips to help you test yourselves ahead of the development phase. Just before we start, let me give a brief introduction of myself. So my name is Nitsan and I work for Amazon as a business intelligence engineer. I'm based in London. I've graduated from Ben Gurion University, a top university in Israel, majored in industrial engineering, and I live with my spouse, my son, and my dog. So why do we need a good design? Every data model, every data product goes through these following stages. The first one is the design, which we are going to cover today. The second one is the ETL, the extract, transform, and load meaning taking raw data and converting it to aggregated table according to the design that we done in the first phase by creating a data pipeline. These aggregated tables are going to be converted into a front-end view where the users will be able to see the data and the insights that they are looking for. The problem is that if there are gaps in the design, everything will be incorrect and eventually the front-end will not give the users the insights that they need to see. Unfortunately, as I mentioned in the beginning, I've learned it the hard way, where I created a design that was missing a fundamental dimension I needed, and I needed to start everything from the beginning, the design, the ETL, and the front end. So what are the steps for designing a good data model? The first thing that we'll need to do is understand what is the business question. Let's assume that our company is launching a new product and we want to measure the user engagement in this product. More specifically, we want to measure the daily new users, the daily active users, the monthly active users, the conversion rate, and the average engagement time. These requirements look really good and they are not vague, but sometimes we can get requests that are really vague and it's important to understand exactly what they mean. Besides the requirements themselves, it's important to understand the definitions. For example, what is an active user? Is it a user who only has an account or is it a user who logged in in a specific frequency? Conversion rate. What is, what is the user who converted? Is it a user who completed the onboarding? Is it a user who clicked? Is it a user who made a purchase? All of these definition may come, definitions may vary from company to company from product to product, and sometimes even people who work on the same product within the same company may have different perspective of what these things are. It's important to make sure that everyone are on the same page. After we've identified the business question, the next thing that we are going to do is understand what are the dimensions, facts, and attributes. Let's start with facts. Facts are the measurements or the metrics, basically the, the numeric values that we are measuring. If we'll take the question, how many daily or monthly active users, we'll need to save the fact number of active users. In order to answer the question, what is the conversion rate, we'll need to save the conversions and the views. In order to answer the question, what's the average engagement time, we'll need to save two facts, total engagement time and number of engagements. The second and the third questions relate to ratio. It's important to measure the, num the numerator and the denominator other than the ratio itself, because we want to be able to aggregate in different levels. Besides the facts, we want to measure the dimensions. Dimensions are the way that data is sliced. Because we need daily data, we'll need to add data as a dimension in order to measure the engagement in the daily level. Beside date, we may want to understand how the engagement KPI is different between country to country. In this case, we'll add the country as a dimension. A third dimension can be, for example, an operating system, an OS in case we'll need to understand what is the engagement in different OSs. We can, need, we can add different dimensions according to the need of the business. 
For example, if we want to understand if females are more engaged than men or vice versa, we'll add a gender as a dimension. When we'll start adding more and more dimensions, the data set will become more and more granular and will also become bigger and to contain new roles, contain more roles. So it's important to choose carefully the dimensions that we insert. Besides the dimensions, we also have attributes. Attributes is additional information which does not affect the level of granularity. This can be, for example, mapping a name to an ID, something that is in the same level of granularity or something that is a higher level of granularity. In our case, let's assume that we want to understand the engagement by region. That's actually going to be pretty easy because we already have the country as a dimension, which is more granular. All we'll need to do is map the region to the country and add the uh, region as an attribute. Besides region, we may want to understand if users that log in from desktop are more engaged than users who logged in from mobile or vice versa. That's also going to be quite easy. We'll just need to map the device type to the OS and add it as an additional attribute. Since we also need monthly data, we'll add the month as an attribute. We also have daily level of granularity. So what we'll need to do is to create a date hierarchy that will create a date, a month, a quarter, a year, etc. After we've identified the attributes, the facts and the dimensions, the last thing that we're going to do is check how we should plan the tables. In order to do that, we're going to use a method that is called star schema. In a star schema, the tables are linked together in the shape of a star. The fact table in the middle will contain all of our dimensions and all of our facts. This table will be linked to different dimensions table. Each dimension table will hold one dimension and the attributes that are associated with this dimension. Let's see how it looks like in our case. So in our case, we have the fact table engagement, which will hold these keys, the date, the country code, the OS and the gender. The dimensions will actually function as keys, meaning they will set the level of granularity of the table, and there will be no more than a single combination of a date, a country, an OS, and a gender. Besides this dimension, the fact table will hold the facts. Active users and new users, number of users a number of conversions in order to measure the conversion rate, and total engagement time and number of engagement in order to measure the average engagement time. Besides the fact table, we are going to have the different dimensions table. The first one is the dimension OS, which will hold the ID and the attributes OS name and device type. The country dimension will hold the country code and the country name and the mapping to the different regions. And the dimension date will hold the date hierarchy, the date, the month, the quarter and the year. So looks like we've finished and we have a data set that works, which is great. Now, how do we check that we got it right? In order to do that, we are going to go back to the business questions and try to answer them by using the data set that we created. Let's take an example from our use case. What was the conversion rate in January 2021 for females who logged in from mobile devices from Israel? Let's query the data model that we created. We are going to select the number of conversions divided by number of views from three table. The first one is the engagement table. We'll also join the OS and the date table and we'll filter the relevant dimensions and attributes. The months, the year, the gender, the device type and the country code. In this case, look like we can answer this question by using the data set we've created, which is great. If we'll expand this exercise and try to answer all of the business questions by using the data set we created and test different, uh, different uh, combinations of dimensions and attributes, eventually we'll be able to make sure that we got it right and we have a data model that works. So to summarize, We've learned why do we need to create a good design. This is in order to make sure the following stages, the NTL and the front end, will give the users what they need. How to do that? By using three stages. The first one is identify what is the business question. 
The second one is identify what are the dimensions, facts, and attributes. And the third is planning the table by using a star schema. In the end, we'll verify the design by querying the data set that we created. Thank you very much for listening. This is my LinkedIn profile. I'll be happy to answer any question. Thanks again.